Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. At Farm Tractor Shows, the dividing lines are clear. Red tractors over here, green tractors over there. On a farm in northwest Missouri, the division between brands is just as clear. See, there's the son Bill out for a ride on his rare red MV. This is a 1947 Farmall MV Hike Rock. Uh, it's really just like any other M, uh, other than having the special front end underneath it and the dropped uh, things on the rear axle there to give it the higher clearance. And there's Bill's dad, Richard, taking a spin on his sweet green machine. This is a 1941 John Deere AW. Uh, it's, uh, we've re completely redone it. Uh, we put everything back originally, but it's, it didn't look like this when we got it. These two brands, Bill and Richard, farm together. So how the heck did they end up on horses of a different color? <laughs> oh, I'll get in trouble here. <laughs> I'm not careful. I, I don't know. I just uh, just always like these old farm malls. They're just uh, the shiny red paint. Yes, I like John Deere's. I, I'm partial to John Deere's. I like them all, but uh, but I like John Deere's. I my dad had John Deere's, and I grew up on John Deere's. And uh, yeah, I, I kind of like John Deere's. Get the idea which brand Richard likes best? It's only natural since big green tractors are what he grew up on. My dad bought a new A, and I, I have the tractor, it's up here in the shed. He bought a new A when I was a senior in high school. And uh, uh, so I, I've set on an A quite a bit. John Deere built its popular Model A tractor from 1934 to 1952. Richards features a six-speed transmission and the classic pop-pop two-cylinder engine. The AW designates this 1941 John Deere as one of the early and rare Model A's with a fixed wide front end. Well, it's different. You don't see any, uh, there's a lot of John Deere tractors with wide front ends, but no John Deere A's with wide front ends. <clears throat> and uh, the ones that, most of the ones that you see that do have wide front ends have a split pedestal on them. And this tractor uh, doesn't have that. It's the, the front end is part of the frame on this tractor. It may look good now, but when Richard and son Bill went to work restoring this machine, it was in pretty sorry condition. I don't think that anyone had ever given it a bath. It, it was grease from one end to the other. I like to get them clean, and Bill Bill does the painting, and uh, and I help him all that I can stay out of the way most of the time. And that helps probably as much as anything. But uh, I just like it all. I, uh, I don't mind getting it in the grease, and I guess you gotta like that part of it. Working together on restoring tractors, the brand's attention to detail is impressive. Here's something that we looked a long time to find, that's an umbrella bracket. And uh, it's a John Deere umbrella bracket. And uh, so we, we kind of thought that was a little different too. Now in the interest of equal time, maybe we'd better let Bill talk about his red tractor. Oh. <laughs> tall. You know, there's nothing else like it in Ottawa County, Missouri, for crying out loud. This tractor, I think, originated in Louisiana, and it had rice and cane tires on it when I got it. I imagine it spent most of its life wading around the mud, uh, cultivating cane, I would say. Got the raised front end here, a stiff front axle here. Uh, give her a little more clearance. Uh, got 750-20 front tires on her. It kind of sticks right up there. This one had truck tires on it when I got it, <laughs> if you can imagine what that looked like. IH built more than 270,000 Farmall M's from 1939 until 1952. This three-plow tractor featured a four-cylinder IHC engine. Some Farmall fans might wonder why Bill's high crop version is designated an MV. I read in a Farmall book one time it was uh, vegetable, but I enjoy going to these shows and people will come up and say, what's that V for? And I'll say, very tall. And they'll look at me <laughs> and they realize I'm just joking with them. Though Dad Richard has been a deer man all his life, his wife's dad did have a Farmall Super M. And that just may be what turned young Bill's head to red. Well, now when you're an international fanatic 
and uh, your dad's a John Deere fanatic, well, you gotta gouge him every now and then. This is what happens when John Deere gets too close to these little farm malls, see? It just kind of sucks them up in there and <laughs> takes care of them really well. <laughs> it's all in fun. These two brands have no problem working together to restore tractors both red and green. It's the family bond that bridges the gap, along with a shared case of classic tractor fever. Well, I've always had it. Born with it, I guess. <laughs> I just always liked them, you know. It's just one of them things when you live on a farm all your life, we'll work with tractors. Well, I think about everybody appreciates old tractors. Yes, yeah. It's almost a sickness. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is uh, she. She doesn't have that sickness, <laughs> but she uh, she understands. She, she's understanding. Dad loves John Deere green. Son bleeds farm all red. Which brand will the next generation follow? <laughs> We've got a boy that's 15, and when you ask him what color he likes, it's definitely red. He likes the red tractor. And so it goes, father, son, and grandson, each with tractor fever and with their own favorites. If nothing else, with all the red and green mixed together, it seems just like Christmas for all the brands. It's not often that the whole family will have things in common like that. Uh, I think it's a good deal.